Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Um, today I have something a little bit different. I was really inspired. I've been watching um, Paul Chion's channel and I've just been really inspired by his journey through Limited, um, trying to hit rank one. And I just was, in so, was so inspired by it that I wanted to kind of set a challenge for myself to see if I could hit rank one mythic uh, in standard. And this month here, I want to use Mono White Humans. So I made a couple changes to the deck since the last video here and really been enjoying the results. I'm just starting to climb through the, the, uh, the ladder ranks right now. We're Diamond Tier 4. And so before we hop in, first of all, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And if you do consider, or if you, if you like my content, please consider subscribing, maybe sharing it with a friend. Um, for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for being here and for supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. Okay, so just hopping in here from the last video, made a couple changes to the deck to really kind of um, see if we could cinch up the Boros Convoke matchup. I ended up adding in two copies of March of Otherworldly Light which has been really, really nice. It's also been helpful against the Azorius Control matchup, um, being able to deal with pesky enchantments, such as um, Temporary Lockdown, for example. But having this on turn one or two up against Boros when they try to Gleeful Demolition, you can just respond and get rid of their artifact, um, which is really pretty important in that matchup. So having access to it, I think, is really nice. Also, just giving the deck two more copies of hard removal is really great, and it's exactly what this deck needs. Um, I did up the Sun Gold Sentinel count all the way to a full playset. This card has just been, I've just been so impressed by this against the uh, Teamer World Souls Rage deck. It's just been absolutely fantastic. It's great against Azorius Control, taking apart their graveyard, and all kinds of other reanimator decks. So, full playset has been great. Um, yeah, really happy with it. In addition, I ended up shaving the recruitment officer and added in one copy of Hopeful Initiate, and then the other two were shaved here for the March of Otherworldly Light, which feels like a nice addition. Um, recruitment officer is definitely great. I think it shines more in a version of this deck that runs a bit more land. So since we're only running 21 sources, um, I felt like it was the easiest cut to make. And then for the, the mana base, just one minor change, just shaved one copy of Mr's Foundry. Um, just was finding a couple times that, that I'd have like opening hands of two Mishra's Foundries and just having two Mulligan. So I feel like going down to three copies feels right. Um, still absolutely love the full play set of Iganjo. This just helps give us more threats kind of baked into the deck itself. So between the Iganjos, the Brutal Cathars, and the March of Otherworldly Light. We've got a total of sort of eight removal spells in a way. And then between the Mishra's Foundry Manlands and the creatures, we've got 37 creatures plus the Manlands sort of gets us to 40, so about two thirds of the deck. Um, I did also bring two copies of Brutal Cathar into the main deck from the sideboard. So I think this has been really feeling pretty good. Just having some more answers to big threats gives us a little bit more interaction. Everything else I've been liking about the deck quite a bit. For the sideboard, shifted a couple things around. We still have the full play set of Knockout Blow and Get Lost. And then ended up, we've got two more copies of Brutal Kafar to, the, to get to the full play set. Two copies of Anointed Peacekeeper for control matchups and kind of more go big strategies. And then one copy of Unlicensed Hearse to really help rip apart the graveyard against uh, Teamer World Soul and um, control decks that uh, use the graveyard in any capacity. Um, and then two more copies of March of Otherworldly Light. This helps bring us up to the full play set against the Boros Convoke matchup. And I feel like this is probably the most important card there, just to be able to slow them down enough to buy us time to really get a foothold. All that said, been absolutely loving Mono White Humans, um, and I'm going to try to take this as far as I can into Mythic. 
Um, hopefully we can hit rank one. It's going to be quite a journey, but yeah, I'm excited. So at any rate, let's jump into some games. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you want to leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it. You don't have to, but if you want to show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. By the way, I did see the comments in the last video about the sound quality, so hopefully um, with a couple changes here, it's gonna be a little bit better. Um, just let me know in the comments if the sound has been kind of cleaned up a little bit, or hopefully that's all taken care of. All right, opening hand looks great. Happy to keep. And we'll lead out here with Cavern of Souls, naming human. Um, and then happy to lead out here with veteran. Okay, so up against toxic. This might just be kind of just straightforward toxic, or it could be like more of like a combo variant. But typically that's gonna be like blue-green only. So here we're just happy to go ahead and get Warden going. And yeah, happy to keep that on top. We've got Adeline coming, so. It's going to be good. Okay, so it looks like it's more of a standard variant. So I think we just want to go night here and just kind of pick up some more gas. Adeline is good, but we're not pushing a ton, and they've got the duelist here, so we're not really going to get a whole lot of use out of the extra tokens. I think the, the Knight Errant's going to be a little bit better. Let's go ahead and, since we've already got an Adeline, I guess we could search for three. I mean, getting a Brutal Cathar would be nice, especially since it doesn't trigger Rot Priest. So yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and... Go for three. Okay, unfortunately we didn't find any one drops here, but we do have the march um, in a pinch if we need to use it to get rid of uh, one of these creatures. Okay, so they're going to give Menace here to Duelist. We can use our March to get rid of the Duelist. So I think we just let that happen and see what they do. Okay, and that's a nice pickup. Um, here, I think 
We can push a fair amount of damage if we go Vanguard. And I, I'm less worried about having to fly over. Although I think it's close between Adeline and the other two plays. I think I'd rather go with the Vanguard. We can push a little more damage here. So... Hmm. On the other hand, Adeline is going to be pushing a fair amount. We can use these kind of extra creatures to keep the Warden going. Yeah, I guess I'm actually going to kind of go back and forth on this. I'll go for Adeline instead. Okay, don't need an extra land here. So they can turn on the seed core here. But I think this is fine. And now I think we do want to go with the Warden plus Vanguard. Although, again, it's close. Having the Adeline is kind of nice, but I think... I think we want to kind of take it to the air here pretty soon. So I'm going to go with the Vanguard plus the Warden. That's going to be enough. I think it ended up being fairly minor, but could definitely see it was pretty close between going between Adeline and the um, and double spelling there. I think on both turns. But yeah, just getting that Warden into the air was pretty huge. It's been really fun getting back into Mono White Humans. It's been a while since I've played this archetype. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Especially with like the recent addition of um, the change that I added to, to bring in Sun Gold Sentinel, which has just been awesome in the meta. Okay, Slesnia Enchantments. Part of me is a little tempted just to hold March here, but I think. Yeah. Because it's, I mean, the veteran is okay. If we march, we can just slow down some of their damage. But I think the real danger comes with um, with Calyx. Yeah, not sure if it's right. But I think I'm just going to march here. Or at least hold it up to see what they play. I could see playing veteran but I think we're gonna use <sighs> we only have two lands so I can see getting rid of the inspector here um, the veteran might be important later Yeah, and now we can go ahead and march the uh, the naturalist, which I think which I think is the more dangerous of the two.
Yeah, I think in this matchup, it's just so important to not fall behind. Uh, here, we're going to be a little bit more mana efficient and just run out the Sentinel. Nice pickup on land here. Happy to use Brutal Cathar to start slowing them down a little bit more. Okay, definitely going to save this next Cathar for Calyx. Calyx is absolutely backbreaking. So, here, let's just go ahead and Knight Errant. And Warden feels pretty good being able to fly over. Um, the extra life is also nice. So we can push this turn, so I think instead of Warden, I'm just going to get another Veteran going. And actually, let's see, we're pushing, yeah, we're pushing a decent amount. <sighs> Do I want to just Knight Errant again? I mean, I think it's pretty good, actually. We can probably find, like, some more pump. Since we know they don't have any board wipes. Yeah. So now we can pick up, like, Adversary plus Copper Coat, and that feels great. Double Copper Coat is going to be really good here, um, especially trying to protect our Brutal Cathar with their Weaver of Harmony nonsense. Um, we can still trade on the ground, so I like sending in Knight Errants. And the other consideration would be getting down the Warden and start working on getting it into the air, which is a real thing. Um, but I think it's, it's kind of too valuable to get these both copper coats going although actually I suppose if we just copper coat and warden then we can start like using these three to pump it up yeah I guess I guess single copper coat is okay although we're representing a ton of damage if we double copper coat I think I'm just going to be mana efficient here And now even pushing with veterans is probably fine. Um, so sending everything except for the Brutal Cathar.
Yeah, this is like the one time when Michiko's just doesn't do much. Gatilda is annoying, though. Okay, so if we just pump with Adversary, they go to seven, block three creatures, and they're dead. That works. Yeah, I think that that's... I definitely thought about it quite a bit there um, at the beginning of the game, but I think getting rid of that early... Um, whatever it's called there, the Jukai Naturalist, I think definitely gave us the breathing room to come back and win that game. Especially with them on the play. I think just re like respecting like the explosiveness of that deck. I don't think like the extra couple life points we would have gained by playing the... Um, the Lunark Veteran would have mattered that much. And we could have just gotten overrun. All right, most likely up against Boros Convoke here. No March, so they could have the Gleeful Demolition. Yeah, it looks like they've got it. Do they have the nut draw of Knight Errant also is the real question. Okay, no nut draw, so that's nice. I'm almost tempted just to play adversary here because like if they have Imidanes on three, that's representing, what, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13 damage. And if they have, like, another Imidane, like, we're just dead. Normally, I'd play, like, the Vanguard here, just because it can block well. But I think we have to be a little respectful of their damage potential. And so just running out the adversary kind of is, like, a stopgap against possible Imidanes. It's like you always have to have that in the back of your mind like can they just kill you with him and dance recruiter this does give him a lot of good attacks unfortunately but like we can at least swing back for three so here i think we just take it because hopefully we can gain this life back a little bit later and we want to set up for knight errant It's not ideal, but if I like if I knew that they didn't have Imidanes there, I would have played the Vanguard for sure. Okay, I think we just take this turn to set up with Knight Errant. Other consideration would be playing Thalia, but they haven't. We knew that they didn't have the third land last turn, so I think we just stay this way. Uh, let's pick up Brutal Cathar to deal with their Warden, and then I think we're gonna need the extra life. Also, we've got a Thalia in our hand, so. Picking up another veteran there feels really good. Alright, so they can hit us for quite a bit here with the warden and just get everything, get it into the air. But at least we can reset their warden with our Brutal Cathar.
So I'm guessing they probably start working on their second warden now. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we pretty much we have to respect this warden, so I think we've got a Brutal Cathar here. I think we just... Hmm. We are taking a ton of damage, though. So, like, if we Brutal Cathar into Night Errant, that might be a bit too much, because then they can just... If they swing in with everything, that's... We're taking... Four, seven, nine. Yeah, that's too much. I don't think we can Knight Errant this turn. So I think instead we just start working on our own Warden a little bit, leaving up Adversary. See, can they just kill us? I guess they'd need Imidanes. So we might be sort of safe to tap down our adversary. I think we can survive maybe a turn like this. And then just hold everything back here. We're definitely on the back foot for sure. Luckily, they kind of whiffed on their Knight Errant. But they have like a billion creatures for their Warden now. And no pressure whatsoever. Okay, so we can do another adversary, but then we still aren't swinging in for, for much. I think we just want to get veteran going. Probably Thalia in case they, well, actually they'd need another land. Otherwise, if they have like, um, I guess case of the gateway express could we could slow that down with Thalia, but if they have like the um, three mana pump, we still have another turn. So maybe Vanguard is better. Vanguard's also kind of nice because it lets us push with Knight Errant, but they probably just trade here. I think it's still Vanguard actually. Could try to get our warden into the sky, but I think that's super risky being at 13. I think we just want a knight errant again. Yeah. I don't think we just die if we do this. It's gonna be rough. But I think we need to find like our other brutal cathar. And I think we want to leave everything else up. Just search for four. Okay, definitely want veteran. Does initiate help us here? Not really. I guess if they find like one of their enchantments, but let's just pick up a Adeline. And then we could send one of our knight errants. I think we, we need to start working on their life total.
I guess the other consideration, like, I suppose last turn if we didn't cast any spells, but we kind of needed to go and find stuff. So now we almost have to, like, natural draw the other Brutal Cathar. Or one of our marches. Okay, now attacking on the ground is silly, because that lets us gain life. Alright, so if we let the Cathar flip, can we survive a turn? We can get our own Warden into the air to block it, and then have like another Knight Errant to block their Knight Errant. Then we just take 2, 3, 9, 12. Yeah, we're still just dead. God. Let's see, if we tap these three and then these three, we can block their flyer and have adversary block the knight errant. We go to 11 and then die to everything else. I think we have to try to buy ourselves a turn here by just getting veteran going. Um and then the adversary to try to give ourselves some more time. I guess it's almost technically better to like play both of them since we can gain six life that way. Although pumping our team feels so good if we can do it. <sighs> yeah, I think we I think we have to just Let's see, we can attack, go up to 14. I guess we can pump here. All right, so I think let's... We have to... Attack. I suppose actually if we don't attack, we can just give this thing flying with and then leave back our adversaries. That might be better. Because otherwise we're just like literally throwing this away into a warden. Yeah, I think we actually, we don't attack. Try to search. And actually, I think we leave maybe another veteran open so we can get another flyer. Sun Gold Sentinel doesn't do it. Like, if they draw nothing, if they draw land here, we can flip Brutal Cathar, and then next turn we can get their Warden. It's kind of a long shot, but... It's possible. Yeah, I think they want to definitely try to, like, represent lethal here. That does give us kind of an opening, though. So if they just only made it to nine, it makes me wonder a little bit. Like, 
I do kind of want to block Knight Errant with Warden, but I think there's like a chance that they maybe have like Lightning Helix here, because that would exactly kill us if we let the Warden through. So I think the play here is actually block Knight Errant with our adversary and then take the nine. I guess we can double block it here if they want to use it to like kill our adversary. That way we still kill Knight Errant. I think that's the play. They may not have Lightning Helix, but that's like, it's a little bit suspicious that them just pumping it to exactly nine. Okay, this is great. So now we flip brutal. Okay, we're back in this. This is amazing. All right, so now we throw down Thalia plus Adeline and swing our way to the bank. And then at 14, if they have like, I suppose if they draw like Imidans off the top, I think we just want to pump this one time. No attacks, just to be super safe. So I think we still live through Imidans if they draw into it. Okay, there's the Imidanes. I hope I was right when I was counting it. Oof. Maybe I, let's see, so. All right, right now we're taking 12, 14, 16, so that's still lethal. Can we keep our adversary alive? I think we can. So now we're taking 10, 12, dropping to two. This feels pretty good. Sun Gold Sentinel to get one of their veterans. Okay, definitely getting in with our adversary this turn. Can we, let's see, we've got eight, 15. Yeah, they're just dead. Man, talk about playing from behind. That was an insane game. <sighs> Gotta play to your outs. Ah, oh, that 
was awesome. <laughs> Those are the kind of games that I just live for. It's all like the insane, crazy, like math, last minute, down to the wire. Okay, we're up against Mono Red if I know this player. I, I usually, he usually plays Mono Red. So, this is a pretty good hand here. We've got Veteran. I guess it just depends on if he's running like the version that I ran last month with. Um... Oh, okay, never mind. I guess he's on Boros. So we could go double Warden here and start working on Warden. There's a argument for going Thalia in case he has like the... Um, if he has like the nut draw of like demolition into another creature or just with the mana floating to go into Night Aaron of Eos. So that is a consideration. Um, I think it's good enough to start working on our Warden that maybe we just let it happen. That's uh, tough, though. I mean, like, because then he gets to, like, essentially go and find everything. Thalia slows him down a turn. Yeah, you know, actually, I think I'm going to err on the side of caution here and go for Thalia. Just to prevent, like, the turn to nut draw. Because now he can, like, blow it up, but he'll be short one creature for Knight Errant. Which is pretty crucial. And this way, we, Rick, we're still planning to go Knight Errant this turn. Yeah, so he had the Demolition. So that could have been game-breaking right there. Like, not allowing him to go for, like, the full Knight Errant search. Now we get to beat him to the punch on Knight Errant, which feels great. All right, so he does have Warden. You can start working on that. But no Knight Errant for now. Maybe he's got it on top. Although I'm a bit surprised he didn't do another activation on Warden. That seems interesting. So do we want to just go Adeline here and push? could also go like inspector plus vanguard and start getting our wardens into the air which feels pretty good let's see let's i definitely want to keep that on top life is gonna matter So Vanguard plus Inspector still doesn't get us into the air. I think we just go Adeline here. Just get it set up. Penguin Evangelist. Oof. Okay. So we've got our work cut out for us. I wonder if we were supposed to, like, activate Warden again last turn. But then that would leave us open for a pretty big attack. So I think we're going to be behind on the Warden fight. 
But we get to at least attack in with, like, Adeline. And the nice thing is he doesn't have four power outside of his warden, so he's going to have to chump the Adeline here. We can also attack with Night Errant, which feels great. And let's get this Warden into the sky as soon as possible. That's a great draw. And I think since he has to sacrifice Warden to kill the Adeline, we can actually just tap out with this Warden here to keep the Warden fight going. We're at 24. Let's see, was that a bit egregious? So he does have Sanguine Evangelist. If he has Imidanes, oh god. Maybe I shouldn't have tapped those. So if he has Imidanes Recruiter and nothing else, that's 4, 7, 10, 13, um... 19 more than enough okay i think maybe we just attack with just the adeline here too otherwise we just like accept that we just lose to it if he has it <sighs> yeah i don't think we can beat it because then like if we have these two back we like block these two we take three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen twenty four exactly yeah, I think we can't beat it either way, so he basically just needs to not have it. Oh, you know what? I forgot we were going to gain life off the uh, the token. Okay, so maybe it would have been better to, to hold back the Knight Errant. I always forget about like the math with Imidane's Recruiter. Although he did chump, so maybe we don't die now. It's going to be close. Okay, War Leader's Call is sort of the same thing. But yeah, we had enough. Whew. Yeah, I've just really been enjoying this deck quite a bit. And over the last couple days, just have seen just a, just a metric ton of the Teamer World Soul deck. So that's part of the reason why we've got the full play set of the Sun Gold Sentinel. The so question here is, do we want to go for Adversary or Thalia? Um, if they had played um, Kumano faces Kakazan, I would almost certainly play Adversary, just because they're you know they're going to play a creature next turn, and they sort of have to choose between the extra counter and, and the burn spell. But there's a decent chance that they've got burn, and we also have four land, so maybe it's crazy, but I think we just play the Thalia here. Just kind of tighten their mana here for a little bit. This is always a question, like I'm never sure which is correct. And maybe it's kind of a moot point because either way they just kill it.
But at least it like burns their turn, which is great. Okay, well that was a total beating. Just absolutely shutting them out for a turn. So now we just Knight Errant. Set up for adversary. Um, yeah, we're gonna get Veteran for sure. Probably, let's see, do we have the breathing room for Warden? We kind of do. I mean, we've got the clue tokens going. That's like a really big, nasty threat. We're kind of already ahead. But I think it's still Warden here. It's like very mana efficient, lets us do stuff. And I think a consideration on like how we play next turn is going to depend on how much mana they leave up. Um, we could just take this here and just start threatening their life total, which I kind of like. Otherwise, I guess we, we kind of like make them spend their whole turn. Um, but then that like prolongs the game. Do we care? <laughs> I guess they answered our question for us. <laughs> That'll work. All right, five and zero in games today feels amazing. Um, let's take a look at the overall stats. All right, we are currently eighty three percent win rate, so fifteen wins and three losses. Um, yeah, this session we went five and zero, which feels amazing, and I really like the changes that I made to the deck, so it's been working really well. Overall in matchups, we are seventy five percent against mono red. 100% against Azorius. Um, yeah, let's see. 2-0 and here against Mono Black. 50-50 against Orzhov. 100% against Boros Convoke. 1-0 um, and here against Demir and Izzet and Selesnya and uh, Abzan. And then also against sort of the four color. I think this must be like a reanimator deck. And then just a loss here against Domain. So... Overall, really happy with the deck. We will see you here for the next one and start working our way towards hopefully rank one mythic. Thank you guys so much again for watching and you guys are awesome. We'll see you here for the next one. Mm -hmm.